In this video, I will show you how to install and configure RES Workspace Manager 2011 Express to replace roaming profiles and login scripts. The things that you have to have in place is a Windows domain, a SQL server, a real user account with local admin access and a home folder. You have to have the downloadables of Workspace Manager 2011 Express and Baseline Desktop Analyzer. You need one Windows XP and one Windows 7. As you may have noticed in the previous uh, picture is that there's no Workspace Manager server. So what I'm doing now is I'm logging on to a workstation and I'm going to install Workspace Manager on this specific workstation. So I'm launching the install, clicking next, next. I won't configure the Workspace Composer, so the agent to run automatically. I will do that later on in the console. Now I'm installing Workspace Manager. So it will be installed, but it will not be active on the system. So it's completely harmless to do this installation in production in, onto your existing uh, desktops. Clicking finish. And now I will do reboot. You can do the reboot, reboot later on, but I will do that to activate the filter drivers that has been installed with Workspace Manager. And now when I log on again, I will launch the Workspace Manager console and it will ask me to either connect to an existing Workspace Manager data store or to create a new one. Since this is a fresh install, I will create a new Workspace Manager data store. So launching the console, click on create. You type in the server name of the SQL server. You can use SQL Server Express. You can also use Windows Authentication, but I will use SQL Authentication just for the ease of trial. Give the database the default name, the default size. I will use SQL authentication, so I will type in a password for the Workspace Manager user account. And then I will select the Express edition. You can switch between editions uh, during the evaluation. Now I'm finished. The console will relaunch and it will open the configuration wizard. I will not use the configuration wizard in this video, so I will just close down the console. And I will also install the baseline desktop analyzer to be able to analyze the current state. So analyze the shares being mapped when users log on to this system, the printers being mapped. So you see I've got an IT resource share and I've got an, my home share. And I've also got a default IT printer being mapped uh, when I log on this system. I've also got some default applications like Office 2010. When I log on to a Windows 7 system, you will notice that this is the first time I've logged on to this system. I had English as my default language in my other, in my XP system, I've got Swedish. You see that there's only my home drive being mapped since this is being done through Active Directory. My IT drive isn't there and there's no printer, no printer share in my system. Moving back to XP, launch in the Workspace Manager tool. You will see that if you go to context and directory services, my domain has been automatically added to Workspace Manager as part of the user's ID, as part, uh, as, as part of the context. If you go to composition and see what's being composed when I log on with a Workspace Manager agent active, so I'm not managing out any applications. This feature is, be, is disabled. Files and folders with drive and port mappings, it's, that's also disabled and there's no printers being mapped through Workspace Manager. 
So the first thing you have to do in Workspace Manager is to tell Workspace Manager which is my home drive. So instead of sifting through a lot of login scripts to figure out what home drive is being mapped, you can use the baseline desktop analyzer to gather that information. So I will just launch the DT sampler file. This can be launched through the login scripts if you want to. I will then go to Workspace Designer. And I will choose Drive and Port Mappings. I will find the file that has been saved. So there will be one file for each user logging onto the system. So there's the administrator at computername.dts. That's the file we want to uh, analyze. I will open it. And now you will see the two shares that has been mapped in my session. So my home drive and also the IT resource. So I will select the home drive. And now Workspace Manager will suggest some context rules. So who should have access to this drive? I will just select the domain users group. So if you're a member of the domain users, Workspace Manager will map the home drive. So there's the mapping. I can give the mapping a friendly name. So instead of the, the path, the users will actually see a name that makes sense. But Active Directory is doing the actual mapping of the drive. So I will tell Workspace Manager to not perform a mapping operation. So I will only tell Workspace Manager that H is my home drive and I will set the friendly name. Now I will enable this feature in Workspace Manager. Since we are replacing roaming profiles, I will tell Workspace Manager to store the personal settings on the home drive. One of the issues with roaming profiles or Windows profile in general is that they get bloated. So they grow very, very large over time. In Workspace Manager, you can specify exactly what you would like to follow the user when they move to a new device. So I will add two items at this point. So we have templates, so we have built-in templates for the control panel. So I will choose to move the regional and language options. So my language will follow the user. So uh, this template covers these settings in the registry. You can add items and you can remove items from our templates. And I will also add a new template to capture the uh, keyboard settings. You can add as many templates as you want and you can also add your own templates. So now we've done two user settings things that we will capture at log off. Now we will enable this feature in Workspace Manager. And now we have to go to Setup and we have to activate the agent. So navigate to Agents, Search, and you see that this is uh, not being automatically run, so it's manual agent. So I will right click and choose to run the Workspace Com Composer automatically. So let's log off and see how it looks like. The first thing that you will notice when you have the Workspace Composer enabled is that you will see the RES Workspace Manager splash screen showing up when you log on. And the only thing that we're doing now basically is to set the friendly name on the user's home drive. So you see that it's saying home drive instead of the path to the server. So let's launch the console and then open up an application. So I will launch uh, Word 2010 and you will see that I've done some customization to this specific application. It's not full screen anymore and I've also removed some of the tabs. Now I will capture settings for this specific application. So I will add a template. So go to Microsoft Office, 
Word 2010. This specific template will capture files, folders, and registry settings specific for this application. So now I've added just three items to capture. If I move over to my Windows 7 system and launch the same application, you will notice that since this is a fresh profile, none of the settings that I have on my XP system is preserved in my new, on my new device. So you've got the default settings. This is not the way I want it. So what we have to do is to install the Workspace Manager Composer on this device as well. It's the same setup. It's nothing different from on, on this system. So we will install the composer. And when the installation is done, we will open the console and it will, like it did on the XP system, ask me, do you want to create a new data store or do you want to connect to an existing data store? And we will choose the latter. So we will connect to an existing data store. So the installation is almost done. So I will launch the management console. I will choose connect and I will type in the SQL server database name. The database name is Workspace Manager. That's a default name. The login is also Workspace Manager. And I will type in the password. And as I mentioned, you can use Windows authentication instead of SQL authentication. It's going to tell me that it's found an existing data store. And do you want to connect to this one? So I will select yes. The console will reload. So you see that you've got a good connection to the data store. Then we will just close the console and reboot the Windows 7 device. If we move over to the console on my XP, I will just select that the Windows 7 Composer also should be run automatic. I will log off my Windows XP machine to capture the settings, my user settings for Microsoft Office Word 2010. So this is being captured at session end when I log off. Now when I log on to my Windows 7, you will also notice that Workspace Manager is active. You will see the splash screen. So everything is okay so far. It's working the way it should. So workspace, the Workspace Composer will do the configuration. So what we've done so far is we've captured the regional settings, the keyboard settings. So you will see that I've got Swedish on my Windows 7 system. And the home drive is also being renamed. So instead of the path to the server, it actually got the uh, friendly name instead. And if I launch Word 2010, you will also notice that my XP settings has been transferred to my Windows 7 device. So it looks the same. It feels just like it did on my XP machine. So this is the way 
you replace roaming profiles with RES Workspace Manager Zero Profile Technology or user settings as it's named in the console. But we haven't done everything yet. So we're still lacking the IT resource share that's being mapped through a login script. So we will add a new drive mapping. We will use the Workspace Designer again to see what the login script configures for me when I log on. So we will analyze. You see that I've got an IT on, on R. It will suggest context rules, so who should have access. I will select domain admins. So everybody that's a member of the domain admin group will get this mapping. Now I can disable this mapping in the login script and have Workspace Manager do it for me instead. I will also add printers. You notice that if you remember, I had a IT printer being mapped as well. So I will open Workspace Designer again. I will enable the feature. Open Workspace Designer. Find the file. And you will see that IT printer is being mapped. I will select the context rule. So I will do the domain admins again. And now Workspace Manager will do this printer mapping for me when I log on. So now I can remove this item from the login script. So this is an iterative approach. It's not a big bang approach if you want to migrate from Windows XP to Windows 7. Logging off, logging on to my Windows 7 system. Now Workspace Manager will do the configuration instead of a login script or a group policy. You will notice that mapping the printer takes a while the first time. And the reason for that is that there's no printer drivers installed on the system. You can, of course, prepare the systems with RES Automation Manager before. So Workspace Manager is composing the workspace for the user. And now you will see that my IT share is also being mapped as well as the printer. And this was a short video showing you how to get started with RES Workspace Manager Express. If you want to know more, please visit www.resoftware.com. Thank you for listening and goodbye.